welcome to the second edition of Griffith Uni News. I'm your host, Michelle Mackey, and I'm joined today by Cole and Erica. Thanks for being here with me, you guys. How have your weeks been going? Pretty good. I mean, I guess mine could have been a little bit better. I had a little bit of tonsillitis earlier on in the week, but treating it now and hopefully getting back on the ball and getting ready for the last little bit of the semester. Well, that sounds pretty awful. Erica, <laughs> I hope your week was a little better than Cole. Well, my week has been really busy with assignments, but I'm just glad it's over. Um, I'm just really excited for the week coming up. Yep, we're getting there, we're getting there. Well, we do have a lot to talk about today, so let's get started. Today marks the 10th anniversary of the Bali bombings that killed 88 Australians. Here at Griffith, flags are flying at half-mast out of respect. Prime Minister Julia Gillard, former Prime Minister John Howard, and opposition leader Tony Abbott will be in Bali to pay their respects. There have, however, been a series of threats against the politicians, but they will be in attendance regardless. But if there are such high-level security threats, should the politicians be going? Is this safe? I mean, in terms of security threats, stuff like this happens to our politicians all the time. Uh, it's not really something that, you know, it, it's a serious matter, it's a serious issue, but it's not something I'd put much weight into, just in terms of you know, canceling travel plans, because that would just mean, you know, everybody's going to start threatening them and nobody will start traveling, or nobody will travel anymore. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can't really let fear control you that much. Yeah. And I think it also kind of shows the Prime Minister taking a stand um, against these threats, saying, no, we're not going to bow down to them. What are your thoughts? Well, I think um, the Indonesian government is doing really well. They deployed um, about 1,000 uh, people to be the security guards. So I'm pretty sure they're going to be protected. Um, on the other hand, I think they should be going. Um, maybe not three politicians, but probably only two, the main ones. So that will be John Howard, because that's when the, ba the Bali bombing was um, mm -hmm. during his government and probably also um, Julia Giller. But I don't see the point of why Tony Abbott's going. Like, well, <laughs> the way I see it, after Julia Gillard really ripped him apart this week after calling him a misogynist, she went on a 15-minute rant in the House of Parliament against him. I think he needs to do some serious work to restore his public image. So maybe that's the reason he's going. It looks good, but we'll have to wait and see how it all works out. Now, like most things our politicians do, this is a controversial issue, but we do wish them the best of luck. And now let's get to China with this week's news. Thanks, guys. In news headlines this week, today, October 12th, marks the 10-year anniversary of the Bali bombings, in which 202 people were killed, including 88 Australians, making it one of the worst terrorist attacks in Australian history. Indonesian police are on high alert today following terrorist threats which have arisen in the past weeks against dignitaries which will be attending the memorial service today. Regardless of these threats, Prime Minister Julia Gillard has said she will be attending the memorial service in Bali to pay her respects to those who lost their lives and their loved ones. A 22-year-old soldier has passed away three days after being injured when a truck rolled over injuring 18 soldiers. Jordan Penpreys, along with a fellow soldier, were flown to hospital in serious condition. Penpreys' life support was removed yesterday morning. He'd only joined the Army back in April. In other news, Australian speaker Peter Slipper has resigned after allegations of sending sexually explicit text to parliamentary aide James Ashby, who is now accusing Slipper of sexual harassment. The resignation came after a 69 to 70 vote to keep Slipper in, after opposition leader Tony Abbott's call for the Speaker to be removed from Parliament. Finally, Big Brother star Josh Moore has left the show following the death of his older brother. Josh's parents were allowed onto the Big Brother set Wednesday night to tell Josh the tragic news, and he has since told producers that he will not be returning to the house. This week's evictions have been cancelled, allowing the housemates to deal with the tragic news. Nominations will resume as normal next Monday night. Josh was a favorite of the house and had never been up for nomination. He will certainly be missed. I'm China Wilson and that's all from the news desk. Back to you, Michelle. Thanks, China. We're going to take a quick break, but stick around for more Griffith Uni news coming right up. If there's a change you'd like to see in yourself or in the world, it can happen at Griffith University. We've got over 300 degrees.
to help you make your first move after school or advance your career and play your part in the world. Griffith University. Your world changes here. Welcome back to Griffith Uni News. Now from the world of Hollywood and Lindsay Lohan is at it again. This week, TMZ released an audio clip of an apparently intoxicated Lindsay Lohan with her equally as intoxicated mother. Now, we can't actually show you the clip due to explicit language, but basically, it's a three-minute recording of a phone call between Lindsay Lohan and her father, Michael, with her mother, who Lindsay claims is on cocaine, heard in the background. There are so many issues raised in this recording. Drug abuse, Dina allegedly stealing $40,000 from Lindsay, and who actually released this audio? Cole, what's your opinion? It's Lindsay Lohan. I mean, who really cares? But that being said, the interaction between the uh, father and her over the phone is sounded pretty interesting. I mean, there's a lot of back and forth that really is quite confusing. Could use some putting in context, really. Yeah. What are your thoughts, Erica? Well, I actually I have no whatsoever interest in her life and I think this is just um, Hollywood trying to get the attention back on Lindsay because she has nothing going on in her life, nothing interesting and um, that's the way she wants to be the highlight of entertainment right now. Yeah, I mean it is a way to get noticed but I think in the end we do care. I mean we're talking about it right now but we care because everyone loves a train wreck but I think more importantly everyone loves redemption. And I think that's what we all really want to see in our heart of hearts is Lindsay Lohan get better and redeem herself. But unfortunately, <laughs> they do sound very high, but not as high as Felix Baumgartner. <laughs> the Austrian skydiver and base jumper holds the world record for the highest parachute jump from a building, and now he is attempting to set another world record, jumping from a capsule in space. Take a look. Clear. I'm on my own. due to weather conditions, but has been rescheduled for Sunday or Monday. So my question is, what's the point of all this? Well, first off, I think it's just pretty cool. I mean, Red Bull's known around the world for doing uh, this monumentally groundbreaking stuff in the world of extreme sports. And it's in this uh, aspect, it's pretty interesting that they're starting to team up to do uh, research for astronauts returning to Earth. So it's a good break from uh, you know their day-to-day -day extreme world. and you know, really combining in something that will benefit us in the long run. Mm -hmm. Erica, do you agree? I totally agree, and I'm for it. Um, I believe he is actually incredible. Um, it takes courage and a lot of um, mental um, capacity. Um, you have to be mentally strong and physically also fit to do um, this kind of challenge. And I agree with the... Um, the project because, as you said, Cole, it will help the future generations and the future of astronauts to return to Earth. Yeah, safety yeah. of astronauts, absolutely. But another thing is, how do you guys feel about possibly witnessing a death? Because this will be live. I mean, witnessing it will be a little bit different, but in terms of uh, you know Felix putting himself on the line, he knows what he's getting in for. I mean, he's jumping from outer space. It's, it's definitely in his cards. He knows it's possibly in the mix, and it's... You know, for us, it'd be definitely something unfortunate to see, but in his world, I think it's you know, something that he's fully prepared to take the risk um, for. I will have to say, though, um, he has already successfully done um, 96,000 feet jump, 
and he landed perfectly fine in um, the desert of New Mexico. And now his attempt is going to be 120, so I'm pretty sure he will be making it. I'm 100% I'm sure. I hope so. Yeah, well, let's wish him the best of luck. With that, let's move on to some entertainment headlines. And here's Peggy. Hey guys, Peggy Ford here with a special theatre edition of Entertainment News. It has been a great month for theatre in New York. The latest Broadway news being, of course, Breakfast at Tiffany's is hitting the stage. Yes, you heard it right. Our favourite Audrey Hepburn classic is expected to premiere in New York sometime in early February. Now, there has been speculation that Game of Thrones actress Amelia Clarke will play the starring role of Holly Golightly, something I'm sure we are all definitely looking forward to seeing. For those of you who don't know Breakfast at Tiffany's, the story follows a young writer named Fred who is in love with the charming and vivacious Holly Golightly. But just as Holly falls head over heels for Fred, her past starts catching up on her. The play will be directed by Sean Mathies. In other theatre news, it was announced just this morning that Tom Hanks will be making his official Broadway debut in April. He will play the role of Mike McAllery, a gutsy newspaper columnist who uncovers the story of a lifetime. We certainly wish him the best of luck with his premiere. Claiming the title of most popular Broadway shows this month are The Lion King, Wicked, Spider-Man Turn of the Dark, Bring It On, The Book of Mormon, Chicago, Mamma Mia and Rock of Ages. And finally, in the latest and greatest news, King Kong the Musical is premiering right here in Australia. The cast was announced yesterday with Hairspray actress Esther Hannaford taking the lead role of Anna. The company boasts a cast of 49 actors, puppeteers, dancers, circus performers and a one-ton, six-metre giant puppet. This enormous gorilla robot is arguably the most technologically advanced puppet in the world. Directed by Daniel Kramer, the music will hit Regent Theatre in Melbourne in 2013. Isn't it just so great to see a Broadway musical making its way down under? Well, that's it for entertainment. Now back to you in the show. Thanks, Peggy. Now let's get a sports update from Caitlin. Thanks, Michelle. Here's what's making this week's sporting headlines. In the NRL, Jonathan Thurston has refused to give any insight on whether he'll remain a North Queensland player after next season. The 29-year-old's coming off contract at the end of next year and has yet to decide where his future lies. For now, he just wants to relax and enjoy his vacation before making any decisions. The ICC announced the suspensions of six umpires following the 2020 finals. An undercover investigation allegedly found that the umpires were willing to give biased decisions or provide inside information in return for payment. ICC panel member Nadir Shah and the other umpires have rejected these allegations. However, suspensions will continue pending a full investigation. In tennis, the number two seed Novak Djokovic beat Joe Wilfred Sanga on Sunday to win the China Open. The 25-year-old Serbian has won the Open every time he's entered and while he's delighted with his latest triumph, his main focus is to beat Roger Federer to the number one in world rankings. Finally, former boxing champ Mike Tyson has been granted a visa from the Australian government, allowing him to go ahead with next month's national speaking tour. Australian officials carefully weighed the pros and cons of his visit and have warned his visa status can be revoked if he breaks any laws. That's it for sports, and I'm Caitlin Wright. Thanks, Caitlin. Let's get to a quick break and we'll be right back. Being the managing director of an events management business and working with clients like Lady Gaga and Guns N' Roses isn't all rock and roll. The serious decisions that need to be made. I've got to know what I'm doing. The first place I learned the power of knowledge was Griffith University. Griffith taught me how to apply what I know to the big picture and the big issues. I know how to find ways to keep the shell on the road. Well, I guess my job is a bit rock and roll then, isn't it? Griffith University. When you know more, you can do more. You're back with Griffith Uni News. Our last story of the day might just provide some helpful tips to all you Griffith students who might be in a little bit of debt. Two postgrad students in the UK have paid off almost $80,000 of their student debts by selling their faces as advertising billboards. 
Ross Harper and Ed Moisey came up with the idea a year ago and started their website, buymyface.com. So what do you guys think? Do you think you might sell your faces, make a little money? <laughs> <laughs> if it helps pay off my uh, tuition here, then yeah, for sure. I mean, these kids made some serious cash, $80,000 in just under a year. That's, that's pretty big money for, uh, for some union college kids. It's a pretty creative enterprise as well. What do you think? I actually would sell mine for 100000 <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. You step your game up a little I, uh, bit. Of course. <laughs> I'll be like, no, 80 to cheap. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you think this has the potential to become a worldwide phenomenon, or is it just um, kind of a I passing think, fad? No, I think it does. It has like a potential, but um, I think the idea should be brought to Australia, so it won't be only in the UK, but also in Australia, Canada, and different countries that where um, the fees for university are really expensive, and also an opportunity for international students to have like um, that benefit, I guess. Yeah, I think in the end what it shows is, you know, just be creative, do something that you find interesting and you find fun, and you never know, you can make a little money from it, right? <laughs> yeah. Now, before we go, uh, let's get a check of your weather from Bane. Greetings, people of Griffith. I am Bane, and I'm filling in as your meteorologist today. It appears a storm is coming, one which will rain down upon this city like nothing anyone has seen before. So while it's not the time for the beach, that comes later. We're also looking at a top of 26 before cooling down as darkness approaches in the evening. A new day dawns tomorrow, one that is looking clear so far, but there is a severe UV warning from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., so be sure to keep to the shadows. Sunday's looking like more of the same, Panel, you now have my permission to sign off. Well, thank you, Bane. <laughs> Our time is just about up, unfortunately. But before we go, do you two have any big plans for the weekend? Uh, yeah, just relaxing a little bit, taking it easy, uh, going on a boat cruise this Sunday. Oh, I don't know how much relaxing you're going to get done on that. <laughs> yeah, I wonder because I'm actually bartending for him and for the event on Sunday. So, yeah, just try to come to the island and have some fun and also help with the charity because it's a breast cancer um, foundation help yeah, charity. It's called event. the Tits Boat Cruise <laughs> and it raises money for breast cancer awareness and it's run by the CSA, the Canadian Student Association. Speaking of which, I have a couple of friends from Canada coming to visit me this weekend, so looking forward to that. And everyone else, have a great weekend, and thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Griffith Uni News.